Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Many of you have been sending us queries on data stage either by commenting on our YouTube videos or by sending us your queries through email. So today we have decided to do a video answering your most commonly asked data stage queries. Now these queries are very generic in nature so we are not going into very much technical details here. For those I might plan some more future videos. So let's start. So the question that I keep on getting asked almost all the time is how can I install data stage for factors? The answer is that data stage unfortunately does not have any trial version. So IBM does not provide a trial version or a trial software that you can download and use for a limited period of time. So it is not possible to get the software and download it on your personal laptops or your personal machines until and unless you have a licensed version. Now a licensed version is not meant for individuals, it is meant for big corporates and organizations that are implementing big projects and it is obviously very costly. So if you are not working in your company on a data stage project and you do not have access to data stage either through your company or through your education institution then it is going to be very hard for you to practice data stage on your own. But if you are working in a company and probably not working on a data stage project and you want to learn data stage and practice data stage and some companies do have their own uh, sandbox versions of data stage for learning so you can explore that option and ask your organization if they have the same and the same is true for educational institutions they might have some their own versions and they can provide probably access to you for practice so that is the only way unfortunately there is no trial version that you can install on your own Another related question that I'm asked many times as well is whether I provide one-on-one or individual tra trainings on data stage. So the answer is unfortunately I do not provide individual trainings on data stage because I also do not have access to a data stage uh, software on my personal system. I am currently only providing corporate trainings on data stage. Okay, so moving on to the next question, how can I schedule data stage jump? So this is more related to your data stage implementation. So data stage itself provides the data stage director client, which you can use to schedule data stage job. So you can just go into the client, add to schedule, click on your job, add to schedule, and then you have these various options, which you can use to schedule your job. There are also external scheduling tools which are available. For example, Autosys is there. You can schedule through CronTab. Then there is Tivoli. So you can use all these schedulers, external schedulers, and schedule your data stage job. And you'll find it many times being done in large production projects where there are uh, a lot of jobs to be scheduled and a lot of permutations and combinations of the schedules. So you can use these tools which provide a lot of options and are very flexible in doing so. So one of the questions that I was recently asked on one of my data stage YouTube videos was how can we schedule a data stage job to run every hour? So I'm not taking individual names in this video so I'm, because I was not sure if you guys would be comfortable. But thank you so much for asking these interesting questions which are really uh, would be helpful for other data stage learners as well. So as you can see here, this is how you can schedule it through a data stage director scheduling tool. So you can see that you can schedule it for one day, for the next day, for every day, for daily and so on. So you just need to select your days and you can select the time at which you schedule. But there's no option to schedule it to run every hour using just one schedule. So what you need to do is create 24 different schedules for a complete day. So you have to create a schedule for the job to run at 1 a.m. Then a job, another schedule for the job to run at 2 a.m., another to run at 3 a.m. and so on till your 24 hours are completed. So you have to create 24 schedules. If you want to schedule it to run every hour through the data stage director scheduling tool. But as I mentioned earlier, there are other external vendors that provide these scheduling tools. So there are various options in those scheduling tools, which will, uh, you can just put some commands in the command line and they would schedule the job to run every 24 hours. But if you specifically want to do it through Data Sage Director, then you have to create 24 different schedules for that job. And thanks again for asking this very interesting question. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the next question. Another question that uh, one of you guys asked me 
on one of the YouTube videos is what is the difference between server and parallel job and this is also a very interesting question and thank you so much for asking this question and we have not really covered the server jobs on our YouTube videos um, so the difference between server and parallel jobs basically is that server jobs uh, run only sequentially so they do not run in parallel because they are not using those uh, concepts of parallelism and partitioning and so on so server jobs were the older versions or the earlier versions which we use at first the server jobs were developed and then the parallel jobs came in and once the parallel jobs have come in you would have noticed that most of the recent jobs are made as a parallel jobs so server job they are rarely used nowadays um, there's no real utility of server jobs the only scenario in which server jobs are still valid and used are if you are using some old jobs so you have very old projects when the server jobs were being written and you have to maintain those jobs so there you will mostly find server jobs in maintenance or production support projects so that is the reason you should be aware about the server jobs as well and how they function but mostly because parallel jobs have so many features and it's so easy to implement and they're so much faster therefore um, most of the new code that is being written and is being written as parallel jobs so the difference in terms of the difference the basic difference is that a server jobs run sequentially because they do not uh, make use of the parallelism or partitioning concept parallel jobs run parallelly using all those concepts and um, some of the stages you would find are different for server jobs and the limited number of stages for server jobs whereas for parallel jobs there are now many more stages as well okay so next question and this is also asked has been asked in one of uh, as a comment on one of the youtube videos so thanks again for asking this question as i mentioned i'm not taking individual names but i want to thank you all for asking such interesting questions so the question here is is entire partitioning to be used on both input links of the lookup stage so we have repeatedly mentioned that whenever we are using lookup stage it is wiser to use entire partitioning and that probably is the only use case of the entire partitioning and uh, why we need to use entire partitioning in a lookup stage is simply because uh, all of the reference data can fit into all the nodes so it is faster for the lookup process to just look for that related record in all the nodes and not go from one node to another so that is why you need to use entire partitioning and that is how it makes a lookup process faster so on which link do you want to need uh, do you need to use the entire partitioning so entire partitioning as i have just explained you the concept of how it makes a lookup faster because the reference data set is now available in all your nodes so the entire partitioning is only to be used for the reference data set it is not to be used for your primary source link it does not make any sense using it for the primary source link that would only slow down the job so entire partitioning is to be used only for your reference data set okay so moving on to the next question again this has been uh, recently asked as one of the comments thanks again for asking this question and the question is when to use file sets and lookup file sets so again this these stages we have not covered in our youtube videos and uh, i'll put a link above where you can see uh, where to use a file set and look up file set so it is an interesting article so i'll put the link above and in the description box file sets are something like a hybrid between the data set and the sequential file uh, stages because their data files are in ascii format so they are externally readable or readable across platform but they are referenced by a single uh, operating system file that has extension of .fs so they are something between a data set and a sequential file set lookup file sets are specifically used for lookup operations so file sets practically speaking file sets have no practical use nowadays i have not seen a file set being used and I've rarely seen a file set being used anywhere and that too uh, there are probably some old jobs where they wanted to use the file set but file sets have practically no use they are obsolete you do not use need to use the file set local file sets on the other hand are also very rarely used and you can directly either use the data set to do that lookup operation or read from a source data set 
So lookup file sets are actually faster uh, compared to data set when you want to do a lookup. So that might be one place, one reason why you would want to use a lookup file set. So when you are doing a lookup from some table, let's say it's a dimension table being used across many jobs or many fact tables that you're loading. So you just want to put that data extracted once from your dimension table and put it into a data set and then use that data set for lookups across your different multiple fact table load jobs. Then that is one use case where you can use the lookup file set, but you can also use a data set in those circumstances. So it's all for you to choose, but these two stages are now almost obsolete and they have not much practical validity remaining. So the next question is a generic one and which is which other skills do I need to know as a data sage developer? So one data sage obviously and other than that you need to know Unix because some of the scripts are based on Unix. You need to do some basic Unix commands so basic knowledge of Unix and SQL to an intermediate level of uh, expertise I would say because it's all it would always help you to have good SQL skills so you can always keep on building upon your SQL skills. So these are some of the mandatory skills that you need to know if you want to work as a data sage developer. But if you have moved beyond your fresher category, so you have more than, let's say, two or three years of experience, then it's a good idea to start thinking about knowing about the newer things as well. So big data for one, uh, know a little about the Hadoop ecosystem, at least conceptually, then you should be uh, aware about the DevOps so that is being increasingly used in many projects. So at least DevOps concepts and a little bit about the reporting side as well. So Many of the data sage project implementations use Cognos. So if you do not know the software, that is okay, but be aware of how a reporting tool works. So the newer thing that has come up is data visualization. And again, Tableau and Power BI are being increasingly used in many, many uh, projects. So at least be aware about what is data visualization? What does it mean? What do these dashboards mean? So at an intermediate level of experience, you should be aware at least conceptually about these things as well. And another thing that you should be aware conceptually about is machine learning. So that is also something which is related to data. So this all this data stage uh, thing comes under the broad category of data and analytics. So we should at least be aware conceptually about all these things. Now, if you have moved beyond even beyond the intermediate level, then it's a good time to start actually learning some of these skills. So data visualization, uh, you can pick up on Tableau, either Tableau or Power BI, either one of these tools, the trainings are available all around the internet. And we're also planning videos on these topics. So make use of all this wealth of knowledge that is available on the internet and learn one of these skills. Then as I said, Hadroop, at least conceptually, you should know Hadoop and big, uh, big data. And if you are keen enough, then start learning some of the languages specific to them like uh, Spark and Hive and these kind of things. Again, DevOps, at least conceptually and machine learning. And many of the projects are actually working with data stage using big data and working on data lakes and using data visualization tools. So they would naturally expect you to know these things as well. And if you have already spent some time learning these skills, you would always have a head start and an advantage over the other candidates. These are some of the questions that I wanted to discuss today. There are many other comments that you have left on the videos. Some of them are very specific to a particular situation. We might not be covering the whole scenario as such, but I would try to answer uh, the more generic conceptual questions that can benefit everyone and everyone can relate to those scenarios. Thank you again for watching this video and stay safe and stay healthy and please take care, good care of yourself and please support us by subscribing to our YouTube channel and as always if you have any data stage queries or doubt then please put them down in the comments below or send me an email and as I said uh, we'll plan future videos as well answering some of your generic questions that can benefit each and every one of you. Thanks again for watching. Thank you and goodbye.